Welcome to Brampton's Memorial Arena for the first game of this semifinal series between, yes, the Toronto Beaches and Burlington Chiefs. Toronto unable to use Ted Reeve Arena. They'll be at Lee side for the rest of this series. As I'm Matthew Carrick alongside Pat Gregoire in the JVI Sports Network. This should be a fun one with two teams that like to run a lot of offense. A lot of offense, a lot of transition as well. Both these teams love to play fast. You mentioned no Ted Reeve for this Beaches team, and that's been a big part of the success for this Beaches team. Nine and one at home. Yes, this is a home game for them technically, but not in the friendly confines of the sandbox. This building will be the host of the Founders Cup, the Junior B Champion National Championship coming up in August and just down the road, the CAA Center. Winner of this series will get there to the Minto Cup, August 22nd to 29th, along with the other semifinal, Whitby and Orangeville. Mark Thompson, Blair Ferguson, and Josh Hiltz, the officials, and for the second night in a row, we get a face-off violation on the opening draw. Beach is in their white uniforms with blue trim going right to left away from Will Johnston. As cutting through the middle, big collision there on top of David Anderson, who put on an absolute show in two back-to-back -back games in Peterborough to get the Beaches here to this game. Burlington into this semifinal by way of a three-game sweep of the top-seeded Mimico Mountaineers. The first sweep of a number one seed since 1958 and the first ever eight over one sweep in Junior A history. Alexis Samard brings down a loose ball to the crease and the first test for Will Johnson is a good one with Chuck Rossin right on the doorstep. Over center, Andy Dalton, who missed the deciding game for the Beaches in that first round series. Up over the top, Willem Firth. Keep your eye on number 14, who makes this Toronto Beaches offense go. Matt Collison, long outside shot there, and Mitch Dunham hangs on. We get a... Blair Ferguson's got, oh, there's no 30 second clock. That's our issue. Gives us a chance to shout out the new sweet looking ref jerseys here in the OJLL. Not bad, they look fast out there. I, I like it. The jerseys are the officials. <laughs> <laughs> But Matt, you mentioned, you know, that huge sweep. I don't know if anyone expected that to happen, but certainly a lot of people said this Burlington team a lot better than an eight seed. And Jonathan Donville had a great story up on the OJ's website talking about how, you know, we kind of saw it coming, not the sweep necessarily, but them to keep it a competitive series, plus 37 in goals for and against all season long. Yeah, so the shot clock now is turned on. They're just trying to get them synced up, and it looks like we are there. Burlington, just to put a cap on that Mimico story, went 5-0 and against Mimico this season, including back-to-back -back wins in the regular season, swept the season series and the playoff series against the Mountaineers. Two of their four regular season wins for the double blue who go home early. They thought they were going to have a deep playoff run. Worth noting off the top here, no Coltrane Tyson for the Burlington Chiefs. He's was out in warm-up in the golf shirt, so looks like he's going to miss a fair chunk of time for Burlington. Big bump down in the corner. Knocked Britton, excuse me, Caden Hewitt off the ball as it's now picked up by the Beaches and eight seconds to cross center. They never got it out of the corner. Both these teams have smothering four checks. So athletic, they're able to get out there, put pressure on the defense. 
As if the humidity wasn't enough to do that to you tonight. <laughs> Rawson will cut the corner, and there's going to be a holding call from the trail official. As winding up and firing here is Braden Saris. We're getting one. Oh. Dale Herodis McComber, they told us to call him Tiha, so we'll do that as this shot goes off a stick and out of play, and we will get our first penalty of the game two and a half minutes into the first period. Saw a lot of these players last year, not just in the bubble season, but a lot of these kids played in that Futures division, and Burlington ended up having a really successful tournament, I believe coming in second and really putting up a good fight in that finals to a very strong Peterborough team. Overtime thriller, I believe, against Orangeville. Yes, that was Banana Lance. That, that still <laughs> exists on the YouTube channel. If you want to go check that out. And then, like you said, Peterborough winning the whole thing. Timon English, a big part of that team, him and Brooks English. Sam has moved on to Senior B this year. But there's another English brother coming, as we were told. As on the run, here's the Beaches back with Alex Gaston taking a shot in on Dunham. Off the bench and setting up Greg Elijah Brown. For Will McLeod, they continue to work it up top. Elijah Brown and McLeod now behind the back over to Braden Saris. Quickly in the corner, Brooks English. Shot comes from McLeod, and now Saris will get a chance right at the tail end of the shot clock. Ball in the stick of Matt Accioni, the captain, who takes it across center. He wants to go all the way. Not sure if that was a pass or a lucky bounce into the corner for the Beaches who do recover. Jacob Hickey. Now to Collison off the bench. David Anderson spins and fires around a double team. Heads up. Blair Ferguson in the corner. Braden Saris off the bench now for Burlington. Number of side steps in on goal for Greg Elijah Brown before that shot. Saved by Johnson and put in the corner. Low forward pass to Andy Dalton. Effectively a trade deadline acquisition from, I believe it was KW, came in a couple days before the deadline. Zach Miller here for Gaston. Over the top on the run, the shot low down on. Dunham, who was going to hold his ground. And penalty has expired, so we are back to five on five. Great PK by the beaches, and again, going back to that Mimico series, one thing that really helped the Chiefs pull off the, uh, the sweep was that man-up offense. The power play was electric. So the beaches know they're going to have to not only kill penalties well, but also just try to stay out of the box. Also worth noting off the top here, this will be the only only game of this series, unfortunately, that we're able to cover just due to no internet at Lee side and Central as another shot in on Dunham from close range. Jacob Hickey this time. Beaches are getting tight to that crease, but so far Dunham's turned away all comers. Yeah, they're getting their looks. They're right on top of that crease. And it's just been Dunham who's stood strong, making it look so easy right now. Jack Perrell and on the run, hard shot there off the end boards. And if the St. Louis Blues taught me anything, it's you can ride a hot goalie if you get them at the right time. So Chiefs are kind of hoping that's the case here to go along with their blistering offense. On the outside, Ty English. They told us Timon likes to be called Ty, so Will allow that to happen as Jackson Raposo now runs all the way down into the crease and two Burlington players nearly ended up in the back of the net. Ball did not, however, so David Anderson will keep possession down into the corner. Gaston with it. Far side, Collison the hard shot. That one goes high, where is it? 
out of play is the answer and in the stick of Burlington. Seen a lot of double picks and seals up near the top for this Burlington offense. The shooter comes up from the crease, so we'll see if they, they try to get that again. It has been working. It's just Will Johnson's made the saves from the outside. Brooks English goes all the way over the top, forced to his wrong side. Now back for Greg Elijah Brown, the bouncer there through the crease of Will Johnson, who was one of the better goaltenders all season long. The no-look pass, how about on the crease? Cam Accioni. And that one bounced through, and Toronto will regain possession, although only briefly as Brendan Boyle coming in. Burlington never had it. The bench off to our right. Normally the visitors bench today, that's the one that Toronto picked as the home team. They wanted the eight count, but possession was never given to Burlington. Love that eight count rule that was added in. It just adds so much more transition and makes the defenders have to get involved in the rush. Well, and it also provides action immediately off the ball too when players decide to push. We're gonna get a, speaking of push, Early change call, I believe, here against Toronto as Josh Hills had the call on the run. This coming just about eight minutes into our first period here of the first game of the semifinals between Toronto and Burlington. Whitby took game one last night over Orangeville. Both game twos will be back on the floor tomorrow at Central Arena at 7 p.m. this series and our crew will be at Tony Rose Arena where you can catch Whitby and Orangeville game number two at 7 p.m. Game three of that series on Monday night. We'll be back at Whitby at 8 p.m. And then at Side is game number three. This is a best of five. With the winner of these two series, not just making the Iroquois Trophy Finals, but also a buy direct into the Minto Cup. Greg Elijah Brown up top to Will McLeod. Hard shot comes from Saris that Will Johnson will make the save on. And now bouncing down the far side, Josh Ferry in transition forces Dunham into a good save. This time it is in Burlington's clock is taken down the interference call just underneath our broadcast position. Burlington was running out of time on that eight seconds to get it over half. Greg Elijah Brown setting up again. Has Timon English, that shot didn't miss by much. Saris will chase it down. Elijah Brown into the corner. Back here for English. Behind the back, Elijah Brown. Saris low shot. And if Toronto is getting to the crease, Burlington a lot from the outside so far, Patty. And that's exactly where this defense wants to see those shots. That's where Will Johnson wants to see. When he's dialed in and locked in, and that's what it looks like this evening, this team has no problem giving out those outside looks. So they'll get a little more aggressive, but they'll force all those shots. They'll take them all day long. Shot on the run, went up and over top of the net of Dunham. Saris down into the corner. And Burlington happy to shoot from out there too. This is pretty much their game, Timon English. Saris, they go quick stick to Chuck Rawson. I believe first touch of this entire power play for Rawson. As now a low shot from the other side in George Pitt's stick. You're right, it is a catch-22 because if you give up those outside looks to a team like Burlington. Look out here, Toronto. In front of Dunham, that shot, and eventually going wide. What a play by Nicholas Volkov to stand over top of the ball and kick it back. Not officially getting possession to start that eight count. But making sure Burlington got possession. It's McCumber, the cutter. And Timon English passes a little bit behind. So it's picked up by Accioni. 
And now to Josh Ferry. Halfway through this first period, scoreless so far. Hope you took the under. Zach Miller to the outside on the run. Alex Gaston takes it to the crease and Dunham there to meet it again. Boy, beaches are getting to those high danger areas. Getting their looks on top of the crease, just not being able to capitalize. Here comes Chris Harland in transition, his shot. Another delayed penalty. I think it's going to be an over and back called against Toronto at the line. Actually only threw the ball away. And I think got a warning for it, but not a penalty. Could very easily could have. As Toronto going to their first power play of the game. Talk about all the deadly shooters that the Chiefs have on this offense. When you think of the Toronto Beaches this year, you think of number 14, Will Johnson, but they have a lot of other guys that can make you pay. You talked about David Anderson and how electric he was the last two games in that series and the big body in Collison and Hickey, the Twin Towers on the far side. This is a fun, fun offense to watch. This is Willem Firth quarterbacking it up top and how about seven seconds into the power play for Willem Firth to open the scoring in this game. Yeah, the pride of Nepean, Ontario doesn't need much time, Matt, to be quite honest. He'll see you get the ball here, <laughs> uses his defender as a screen and that is just a brilliant Man. shot. Little skipper. This guy has so many different tricks in his bag. Every time I see him play, he has some sort of new hitch, a, a new release. It, it, it is impressive to see. Should be no surprise, the historic beaches season for Willem Firth, the first ever Toronto beaches player with 50 goals and 100 points. Only the second beaches player ever to hit the century mark in a regular season. Such was this season for Willem Firth. Yeah, talking to the coaching staff, they're, they're incredibly proud of, of what they accomplished. That might have been over and back. Yeah. Toronto's bench thought it was. This, this one's waved off. Over and back. Okay, I don't know if Toronto got there quick enough. And Jack Brolin, but... Anyways, Beach's possession here. David Anderson. Cycling through with Hickey. Just as we started to learn the numbers in that navy blue set, they bring, up, <laughs> bring out the whites, which have a different set of numbers. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a chat with Johnny Zamboni, their equipment <laughs> manager, because... <laughs> Great save by Johnson. Man, he's, he's locked in tonight. We saw him, Peterborough, struggle a little bit early on. Then he started to figure things out, and that's kind of the way he sometimes takes a while to get going that's certainly not the case tonight had a great season in the bubble last year elected to ride that into the nll draft and he is a practice roster player new york, new york yes he's the riptide yep yeah so he a second guessed it as it was coming out yeah he, it was a good guess I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these Beaches players possibly enter the draft this year. On the run, Jackson Raposo. Shot ended up wide off the end boards. Jeremy Phoenix Lefebvre there to pick up, however. Phoenix Lefebvre, the face-off specialist for this team, but as you saw there, can jump up in transition from time to time as well. Cam Accioni. Feel like we've been watching the Accioni brothers play junior for about nine <laughs> years here. They started in Barry, did they not? They did. They started in Barry and, uh, you know, able to come here and play for the beaches in that expulsion draft, I believe that's the, <laughs> the term. I don't know. The dispersal, dispersal draft. Dispersal draft. And uh, they've been great ever since. Here's Timon English. 
Back across the floor, he'll find Saris. And Taylor Julie all over Braden Saris. Look out there, that one sneaked through the wickets of Johnson, who was looked back, saw it was squirted through, and looked skyward afterwards. Pass here for Anderson. Anderson has cut and run on the back of his jersey. He does just that, but the dive lands in the crease and crease violation called, allowing Burlington to take off. Brooks English to Alexis Samard. This shot in on Johnson. Jack Perlin down the far side. Now for Collison. Trailing off the bench is Hickey and Firth. It'll be a pick and roll over on the far side with Hickey. The return pass ended up on the carpet and Samard a two on one. Alexis Samard shot forced wide by the stick of Matt Collison running back on defense. It's been a quick back and forth game. Here's Dalton now the shot. In on Dunham, he'll hang on to the rebound as well. Nicholas Volkov. Here Dan McRae asking Burlington to push. Here as they like to keep this pace high. Rawson all the way back up top for George Pitt now. Under five to play in the first. Saris bounces it off the end boards and up into the netting that circles the glass here. On the outside is Anderson. Quickly through Collison to the outside. Accioni couldn't pick up in the corner, so turning and firing quickly was Collison, and it bounces back over the timeline. Exactly four minutes to go here in the first period. Just the one goal from Willem Firth on the board so far. Brooks English to the far side, and Timon had an open net if he pulled that down cleanly. A play continues. Shot here. Look out through the feet of Johnson. Second major shot in a row that gets through the legs, but Jeremy Phoenix LeFave there to take it right off the line. Alex Gaston. This Burlington defense, I don't know what takeaway numbers are tonight, but there's another one. They're big, they're fast, they're aggressive. That's just a recipe for a ton of CTOs. That's certainly been the case here tonight, Matt. That's a great observation. Here's Pitt. Trying to flip that into the corner for Greg Elijah Brown. Big hit coming. Him and Perlin. Call for Black at the tail end of the shot clock. Elijah Brown. Still trying everything he could do to get that on net, and none of it worked, however, as they do get the 30-second violation. As we get down the stretch here, both teams do have two timeouts. They can use one per period. And Zach Miller to the outside. Shot wide of the mark from Anderson. Rolls all the way back to center. Long shot from Collison does get in on net, but Everybody had pretty much headed for the bench at that point. Timon English back into the play. Will McLeod. Brooks English trying to work around a screen from Saris. Nice two-man defense on the far side for the Beaches, however, as ball's going to scoot away from Timon English. He gets double teamed over there on the ball by Caden Hewitt and Chris Harlan. Another 30 second shot clock kill by this Beaches defense. <laughs> Quick reset and Burlington on the run. And what about the back check there? As I believe that was Max Skeen was all in alone. On Johnson, another pass that bounces away from a Beaches offensive player. Picked up cleanly, however, by Andrew Vredenberg. And 
four, five. Blair Ferguson said count them, and I only got to five, but he must have seen one sneak back to the bench on the side of Burlington, who will get a their second penalty of the game. Took all of seven seconds for Willem Firth to score on the first one. Oh, well, you, you got to assume that Burlington will be keying in on Firth now. I mean, there's no doubt he was probably highlighted a few times in their scouting report, but we'll see as it looks like he's trotting down to the crease, so they're going to try something different. And again, talk about how dynamic this offense is. Well, the power play, uh, Riley O'Connor has done a great job chalking up so many different plays. Yeah, I don't expect Firth to be down in that corner for very long. Here comes a bit of a swing. Firth cutting through the middle, actually collided. Michael Grace, who had a very strong back half of the season, did Grace for the Chiefs. Greg Elijah Brown will bring it across center and we'll slow things down as we near the final minute of play here in the first period. Brooks English will posture up in the corner. Tries to cut back, can't shake Andy Dalton. English circling the crease now, thought about the dive attempt, which isn't necessarily illegal here in OJ, but very hard to do and keep your feet out of the cylinder at the same time. It's very hard for the officials to call it as well, I'll, I'll be quite honest. The, the summer ball cylinder certainly is very difficult to call. Here's Firth up top, the C's part, no shot, and he goes for the quick stick from Anderson instead, and Dunham comes up with a big stop. Great feed from Firth, but you almost wish he maybe got a little bit selfish there and took that shot himself. I was kind of surprised Burlington didn't take time out. A bit surprised that Toronto's not taking one here either, and they do just inside of the center line. I'm not sure where the eight count was, but there will be just under 10 left here in the first period. It was very close. <laughs> it was real close. <laughs> Great pace to this game so far, Matt. Yeah. But this is kind of what we expected, right? With, with two defenses that are supremely athletic, that like to push the ball up in transition, some dynamic pieces on offense, two tremendous goalies, and haven't mentioned it too much, but also two outstanding coaching staffs at that as well. Again, this game coming to you from Brampton, Ontario, which will be the site of the 2022 Minto Cup, August the 20, uh, 22nd to the 29th. Tickets are now on sale, which include a $100 full tournament pass Gets you every single game, including the final series. We'll have all the games broadcast for you. More details on those plans will be coming in the near future. Ticketmaster is where you can pick up your passes for the Minto Cup. Here's Willem Firth. Johnson is on the bench. Firth will put it in the corner. Quick stick. They try to Accioni. Big rebound up for grabs. And Dunham will just drag it back into his crease and out of harm's way. But Willem Firth. The lone goal scorer in the first period. Toronto leads 1-0. You mentioned it, Matt. If you took the under, you got to be pretty pleased right now. But just with how much offensive firepower both these teams have, you expect at some point the game might open up a little bit more. But then again, the goaltenders have been sharp. Well, we'll find out in about 10 minutes' time. That's when the second period comes your way. Toronto and Burlington from Brampton continues here on our, excuse me, our Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week presented by the JVI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Hey guys, this is Paul Dawson for the Rochester Nighthawks. And this is Dan Lomas of the New York Riptide. We've come together to create Back of the Bird, sports stories from the best spot they're told, the back of the plane. We're sitting down with NLLers across the league to chat about Junior A, Senior A, NLL, MLL, everything that goes along with it on the floor, off the floor, and it's presented by Cottage Spring. So give us a listen wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, and I swear you'll love it. Like and subscribe. Peace. Swipe.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse Leagues Game of the Week are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up Campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.com. Dot org. Just one goal to speak of in that first period. It came off the stick of Willem Firth seven seconds into their first power play of the game. And, I mean, we talked to offense pretty much the first half of that period, Pat. We got one goal on the board. And it's not for a lack of chances, let's no. be quite honest. It's the goaltenders have been absolutely dialed. Um, I've talked to multiple people in the con uh, concessions during the first period there, and everyone... the the conversation started with, it's really hot in here, but the second thing was talking about how hot the goalies were. <laughs> Speaking of how hot in here it is, uh, shout out Pat O'Toole, Brampton Excelsior's head coach, who ran us up a DeWalt Industrial fan and just kind of sits on the glass over here. We already have a bunch of them, but that, that thing's cool. I like that one. We already got our first star for the game. And, so. I, and I like Pat O'Toole a lot more after that. So <laughs> trust me. Teams have switched sides. Peaches will go left to right. They get the all-important face-off here, which means that they've got 20 seconds left of power play time to work. And it's Firth up top again. Now across to Collison. Firth, big screen in front. No room for him to shoot. A low one comes from the far side of Anderson, however, who will score. Uh, again, this just shows how dynamic this offense is. Originally, they run... What a lot of teams call that scissors play, where you send the double seal, you see at the top there, no options for Carlson, so he gets it back up to Firth, and Firth then finds Anderson, who sees a ton of daylight, and any time David Anderson gets the ball in his stick, you cannot give him that much space, because he'll make you pay. Two points now for Matt Collison, and another face-off win for Jeremy Phoenix LeFave, who is really starting to impress at that dot. Becoming one of the better draw players here in the OJLL. Jacob Hickey, he'll shoot through traffic. Willem Firth scoring seven seconds into the first power play. David Anderson scoring with seven seconds left in their second power play. That's, that's the sound of my mind just blowing that. <laughs> Greg Elijah Brown with a couple beaches players hanging off him, took it to the cage in the first save the period for Will Johnson is out of the way. Matt Collison back for Firth. Firth is pass got knocked down went right back to him and now bounces out of the stick of Hickey but right back to Collison. Couple friendly bounces there for the home side here tonight the beaches but no time for them to get a shot away. George Pitt putting this ball outside for Saris. He works around his screen, getting it back to Greg Elijah Brown in that shot. Hung on to by Johnson. If you joined us late, one of the biggest offensive weapons for Burlington, not in the game and potentially the series, Coltrane Tyson out due to injury for the Burlington Chiefs. Alex Gaston picking up a low pass on the far side for Toronto now. Back for Collison, he goes across the floor looking for, excuse me, Zach Miller. Miller will flip it over the shoulder on a hop in for Dunham, but that's all they could muster on another very tight defensive set for Burlington. Been incredibly impressed with the, this defensive unit for the Chiefs. They're just suffocating, they're big, strong. They got, they've got some sandpaper to them as well, and. Pretty good goal back there as well to, to make the stops when they do falter. Well, here's the thing. Everyone kind of looks at that as they score cross crease. Pass, we'll get back to that in a second. But Burlington are on the board. This is just phenomenal ball work here. As we'll see, the ball gets swung across to the far side. Gets down low and look at all the movement. Look at all the picks, just creating absolute chaos and then it goes right back to the backside quick stick we've seen Burlington now 
two or three times tried to go to the back door. They just hadn't been able to pull the trigger. That time they do, and it works. Deo Heordis McComber. Tiha, they've told us to call him, makes it 2-1. The point I was going to make is Burlington's now going to come up on a two-on-one transition break. You look, oh, you know, eight seed, 500 record, 10 and 10. Only four wins separated these two teams in the regular season. And look at Burlington's record. They didn't lose any games by more than three goals. A plus 37 goals for and against. Like, this is a team that just didn't have a lot of luck. And I think we're seeing, you know, a couple bounces go one way or the other, and now they're starting to go the other. Pretty decent squad here for Dan McRae. Firth over the top. That shot, sidearm this time in on Dunham. Called for the over and back is David Anderson. Perhaps caught it on the wrong side. That's just over the rail of our broadcast position here. Marigny. On the run, a sidearm shot from Alex Marigny. Bounced in on net. Accioni looking for help. That's Matt Accioni. He'll find it off the bench of the former Jacob Hickey. Now in the corner, Zach Miller for Collison. Ball finds Firth as it normally does. Had Dunham peeking behind him, but that ball just stuck under the pads. Nicholas Volkov. Cross here, Brooks English, Braden Saris hard shot. The noisemakers are out for the fans from Burlington down to our left. And for a neutral site kind of last minute game, this is a decent crowd here. About 50-50 tickets thinking I was going to win it by default, <laughs> but Greg Elijah Brown hits it off the post. Firth. Swing it back off center. I don't know if that gets me half my money back or not, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> Accioni, look at the number of moves for Willem Firth on the doorstep. This one's pretty, Patty. Willem Firth, are you kidding me? This is a thing of beauty from the former Nepean Knight. We'll see, and heads up play here. Look, he, he makes it seem that he's not going to be a cutter. Then he does cut, backdoor cuts his man, and then with one hand on his stick is somehow able to pull off that magic. Just filthy, filthy stuff from Firth. I believe this is a water break here, not team had called timeout. I believe you're right. And... Man, seeing Firth, you know, having a, a chance to coach him in that bubble junior tournament, the uh, futures division that it was, you know, being around him, seeing all this, like, it's crazy to say, and I'm not saying he's this player, but he does give you a lot of Jeff Teat vibes yes, to him, yes. the way he plays. He's small, he's under-assuming. He has so many different weapons in his bag. It is, it's remarkable. I think we said the exact same thing in Peterborough the other night. Jonathan Donville had said it earlier on in the season. Still, still a couple steps to get to that generational, undisputed, seven years in the making, first overall pick type player. But Willem Firth just does kind of have that little that, that, that edge to his game that, that reminds you of what Teat used to do in this building, no less. Home games for Toronto, by the way, will shift to Lee Side Arena. Unable to use Ted Reeve, I believe, early ice going down there. Yep. And Lee Side wasn't ready in terms of lacrosse for tonight. That's why we're here in neutral site for game one. Someone asking that in the YouTube chat. As the shot comes through from Greg Elijah Brown and Will Johnson drops down to make the save. That chat is always open, so weigh in if you're on the Burlington side or the Toronto side tonight. Some good discussion going on amongst our live viewers. 
Matt Collison back for Firth. Pair of goals already of the three Toronto's put on the board. Cam Accioni brings it back to the near side and no room for Collison to run, so it drops out of his stick anyways, right at the tail end of that shot clock. So we look down into the corner and... Quick shot and another one. I was gonna shout out Alan Corkum who is here in-house filled in for a game earlier on in this month. As Mitch Dunham will hang on for the save. Michael Grace back the other way and get the sense right now that this is starting to ramp up the tempo here. Both teams do like to get out and run. And as I say that, Will Johnson pushes the floor again, getting it down to Jackson Raposo. And we just talk about the beaches transition, you can't not bring up Jackson Raposo's name. He's a guy that, he also has the green light. He can play some offense as well. He pushes the ball up, they'll allow him to stay. So he's already done that once or twice this period with the long change. George Pitt bringing it down at the restraining line. He'll give back to Greg Elijah Brown, who looks like he'll quarterback this offense in the absence of Coltrane Tyson. Right in Saris, the low shot. Johnson will make the save. Elijah Brown back to pick up the Lucy. And a long range shot coming now from Will McLeod, who's been unusually quiet so far in this game, although he does get the reset there. Pitt got knocked down as McLeod has it again. McLeod back for Pitt. Looks back to the far side, McLeod, just as I say that, rips it off the post. And now Matt Accioni will run it down floor. Three Burlington Chiefs got there, and you can see the tight defense played on Willem Firth, who's gonna get a slashing call as he was being worked over by Alexis Samard. And Firth gave a couple response chops. He wants a offsetting minor, I believe, would be my argument, but I didn't see anything from Samard that would warrant a penalty. Well, that's what's being hollered from the Toronto Beaches bench as well, saying that it, it's got to be both if you're going to call first for the slash there. No, I don't think so. Samard was just playing tight defense, and that's the best player on the floor. There, there were a couple shoves that knocked him back a few feet, but nothing really over the edge, in my opinion. It was first that responded with a, a two-hand. Did the first one, and then the second one got called. So it wasn't even like... Oh... May have got away with a trip there, however, as trying to beat the double team. The Beaches player went down. Here's Marigny back the other way as that shot saved by Johnston. And uh, trainers are going to be looking at the rug burn after those two players went sliding through the crease. I will say, though, this turf, it is a different style of turf. Yes. Not like the carpet. Dive attempt from... Alex Gaston called in the crease, and I believe that's the dive call where the feet entered the cylinder. Sound mm -hmm. like the whistle went when he was midair. Also could have taken off on the white paint. As Saris will take top spot on this power play now in the back half. Saris is shot off the bar and in. Saris was an X factor in series number one. Well, he's gonna have to do the same thing here in round number two. If the Chiefs are gonna wanna punch their ticket to the Ontario Finals. Look at this shot. It's gonna come back up top here, just outside the arc. You don't hear the ping on the replay, but it was <laughs> ringing our ears here at the Mem. A beautifully executed shot from a, a sharp shooter. Man, this Burlington team just does not go away in games. One goal. Look at all the offense that Toronto's been putting together, their transition opportunities. And I mean, it's 3-2 at the midway mark of this regulation time in game number one. So true. They're just a pesky 
relentless team on both sides of the ball. Craig Elijah Brown, one hand pickup. He was dealing with the defender halfway through the shot clock. Elijah Brown gets taken down. And now Sarah's calling for it, found room to run and shoot. And Johnson saw that one the entire way. High step down the far side. Raposo will turn and fire. That's hung on to by Dunham. Is Raposo drafted? Oh, Raposo still at, at uh, JHU, Johns ah. Hopkins. So he has at least one more year, if I'm not mistaken. Someone's going to be very happy oh. selecting Jackson Raposo in the next few years then. He is, you know, a prototypical NL style of defender. He's, he's relentless. He can push the ball in transition. A little bit undersized, but he makes up for that lack of size with his tenacity. An undersized, skilled player playing for the beaches. Who would think it, eh? <laughs> it's, it's funny how a lot of these teams just have players that fit a style and a mold. You could call the same team 20 years, and they're all the same. There's Saris again. Not quiet for much longer. As that one will tie the game. Saris is starting to heat up, and that is bad news if you're a Toronto Beaches fan. Mentioned how he came to life in that series. Great backdoor cut. Dalton's got to do a much, much better job. Not getting caught ball watch, watching there. Seen Saris sting the pipe and in on his first goal, and then shows off his athleticism with that backdoor cut. Just shows another dynamic player in this game that can burn you many ways. And that's the third assist now for Brooks English as well. Both of them on the last goal with him standing about a foot and a half away from the boards. So the Burlington Chiefs have drawn it back to even. They're gonna make me look back in the record books and see when the last time a number eight made the Minto Cup, I'm sure, at some point. In this series, it's going to be close. As Willem Firth brings it through. Beaches would like me to not have to care about that record, of course. <laughs> As they cut through, quick shot there from Hickey. That ball was flying through Collison and Gaston beforehand. Nice little set play for the Beaches on that offensive trip. Greg Elijah Brown down into the corner. Here's English again. As we said, three assists in this game, all from about this spot on the floor. Brooks English will nearly take it over the top. Greg Elijah Brown knocked his man down. The shot does come wide of the mark, however, and English near center will just roll it out of harm's way with the shot clock about to expire. Here's Raposo again. Strong right. Strong right. Matt Collison to the outside through Zach Miller. To the boards again, they go for Anderson. Oh. What a physical offensive player. That ball's gonna roll across the line and Brandon Boyle wanted the quick restart, but right in front of that Toronto bench. Their defense caught up, didn't get the whistle anyways, so now Saris will take over. It may have looked like not the best shot selection for Anderson there, but just based off all the net we could see at that point, I, I don't know what exactly happened with Mitch Dunham's angle or, or what was going on with his approach, but he had so much of that near side just wide open, and this is a goalie that's normally uh, impeccable when he comes to playing his ankles. Chiefs are playing close attention to Willem Firth right in the middle on this set. And in turn, the Beaches went to look for Hickey. Here's Jack Travacos. Travacos, excuse me. With the defense closing in, he decided to peel off. 
Love the beaches trying to attack the middle of the floor, but it seems like they're just forcing it now, even when it's not there. Of course, you always want to attack the middle, but no need to force it when nothing's there. David Anderson and two goals from Willem Firth. Both have come from outside shots. Although two of them have come on the power play as the Beaches will get the over and back and Alexis Marigne will get the quick restart as this ball goes up and out of play, bouncing around through the rafters and eventually comes back on the turf. Simone English, Marigne to the far side, returned back for Brooks English. He finds a cutter and a left arm save made by Johnson. Beaches pick up the loose ball, however, and this is on their eight count. There's no chance they're getting it across center. And Burlington will have a fresh 30 with that low offensive pressure. English to the outside, George Pitt. Cross floor, sidearm shot taken from McLeod. And now looking for the loose ball from Jeremy Phoenix. Lefebvre gets it, and he'll feed forward for Raposo. Boyle quickly on Raposo, who rolls it back to center. Phoenix Lefebvre is there. Lefebvre will find Miller off the bench, and now Phoenix Lefebvre heads off, but this is halfway through the beach's shot clock. Firth, return for Miller, who had just got clear as his defender fell. Colin Matthews shakes one, now two turns and fires. That was setting up to be pretty for Matthews, but he will get the reset and the Chiefs will get the ball again, much to the delight of their fans who have made the trip across Highway 403. English for McComber. This is Brooks English. He'll take the shot this time. Where's the ball? Johnson not sure either. Still don't know where it was, but it's picked out of the crease by the beaches and now brought into attacking territory. Under five to play here in the second period. Tied three all. Game number one of the semifinals here in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. Willem Firth with a pair of goals already. This time he'll find a cutting Alex Gaston. He Takes a shot off the pads of Dunham and up out of play. What a pass. Unbelievable vision from Willem Firth. Well, those back-to-back -back plays now with that one there as well. I know when we mentioned the name Jeff T, people's eyes would have got wide, but you can see it on those two back-to-back -back plays as now an eight-second count against Burlington. Both these offenses, man, they, they bring so much to the table. The thing I love is just how relentless they are when the ball's on the turf or when the other team picks up the loose ball. That's another eight-second clock from both these offenses now. Cam Accioni will pass it across Florida. No-look shot from Collison. He was yet to get on the goal category here in this game. A pair of assists, however, through the first three goals that the Beaches have put on the board. On the run, sidearm shot there from Timon English from long range. That'll find the safety netting. And now Raposo across center. The reason I asked that about Raposo, he's another guy who I feel like has played about 17 years of junior <laughs> at this point. Far side, low shot from Miller gets in through Dunham. Great job by Zach Miller to kind of create his own shot here. As we'll see, the ball's gonna get swung over to the far side. He's just gonna spring himself open here. Recognizes there's some space. Good pick there from Gaston, but this one just ripped all the way from Montreal as it sneaks through Mitch Dunham Miller gets his first goal of the postseason Go 
Phoenix Lefebvre at the faceoff dot. Yet again gives the Beaches possession and from the outside, I was just about to say, you know, you don't catch Dunham very often, but if you can, take your opportunities, and David Anderson does just that. And that's what this offense is all about. It's, it's strike while the, the iron's hot, and right now it is. A little bit of a risky pass there from Phoenix Lafay, but look, you have to give more respect to David Anderson. Got to slide there early, get out to hands or he's gonna make you pay. We've seen that countless of times. Will Johnston calling for the water break here and what this is gonna do is give Mitch Dunham a chance to come behind, come underneath of us and collect himself as well after two, I'll say shaky goals. A very uncharacteristic, yes. The, you know, the, the first one from Miller there, it was a blasting outside shot on the run, but of course he got a piece of it. The other one there, yeah, you probably like your defender to, to get up on hands there, but I, I tend to agree. I think those are two that he's going to want back. Uncharacteristic. What, what did you say? It was way better than whatever I had. <laughs> I think I said uncharacteristic. I think that's what I said. Uncharacteristic, and there was a word after that too. But That's why you've got the Borelli Award, my friend. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> No clean win for Phoenix Lafayette this time, but on a violation, Beaches will get possession as David Peterkin got run over. Look out here, close to the over and back line, and the ball does just dribble across that time stripe. Giving Burlington a much needed offensive possession here. Saris, though, throws it away right into the stick of Raposo. One to beat, it's McComber who throws a big chop in the shot from Raposo. Save made by Dunham. Raposo's had three or four opportunities now in transition, just not being able to find the back of the net. There's no doubt it's going to eventually drop for him. It'll drop for Chuck Ross in first, however as Burlington back within one yet again. So playoff lacrosse is all about one chance down the other way. Team makes a big stop and it's up and out quickly. Chiefs are almost not even done changing before we'll see them get into action here. Great, again, this has been a, a kind of an ongoing theme this period from these goals. It's the backdoor cuts. Defenders are getting a little bit too aggressive uh, and they're just getting backdoor beat and allowing these guys to get to the middle of the floor. Look out, Brooks English, who picked up another outside assist on that goal. He's got four now, all from basically the same spot. As we come down the stretch drive here, both teams have both of their timeouts as English will look for another cutter. Huge collision going through the middle. There on Timon English, who gets up, looks to be okay, but Got hit a couple times while falling. Timon English outside, he'll go to McComber. Saris, and now Pitt. George Pitt while falling, that shot forced wide and running into it is McComber. Down on the crease, Saris through the legs of Johnson, we're tied. They say lacrosse is a game of runs, and isn't that the case this game? We see the Beaches score two quick ones, and now we see Burlington, and this is an unfortunate play for the Beaches as everyone's starting to run up field and forgets, oh wait, Brandon Saris is down on the crease. Ball goes the other way, bam, in the back of the net. Another uncharacteristic miscommunication from this Beaches defense. Hattrick for Braden Saris, and they want more. Greg Elijah Brown, a number of moves on his way to the crease. Elijah Brown being worked over as Beaches thought that maybe he got contact with Johnson. That ball I thought had snuck through Johnson, but somehow 
fought through his equipment. We're in timeout territory here, but you can see on screen five seconds between game clock, shot clock. Accioni out of the corner. Here for Anderson. Up top, Hickey. Now Collison. Three assists in the game, turning, firing Anderson. That one partially blocked, and on his horse is Brendan Boyle. Boyle with one to beat, turns and fires, and Johnson will make the save, and the beach is right at the horn, will send it down floor. But we will sit tied at five after two periods here in Brampton in game number one of this semifinal. Anytime you think, okay, maybe the beaches are going to pull away here, give your head a shake because that's exactly <laughs> the DNA of this Chiefs team. They'll go down, but they're not going down without swinging. They claw their way back up, tie things up, giving us a great setup for a, a, what should be a good third period. Should be indeed. It comes your way in about 10 minutes' time as we take the break here. Ontario Junior Lacrosse League semifinal action is presented by the JVI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Hey guys, this is Paul Dawson for the Rochester Nighthawks. And this is Dan Lomas for the New York Riptide. We've come together to create Back of the Bird, sports stories from the best spot they're told, the back of the plane. We're sitting down with NLLers across the league to chat about Junior A, Senior A, NLL, MLL, everything that goes along with it on the floor, off the floor, and it's presented by Cottage Spring. So give us a listen wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, and I swear you'll love it. Like and subscribe. Peace. Swipe.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse League's Game of the Week are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, visit new.milk.org. There they are, and we appreciate their support. And the Minto Cup official website is now live. TheMintoCup.com is where you can find everything you need to know about the Minto Cup, including... Are you checking it out? I am. Is it .ca or .com? Uh-oh. We're about to find out. .com. Hey, there we go. It like is live, and <laughs> it looks good. Big button for buy tickets there. $100 for your tournament pass. Gets you every game, including the final series at the Brampton CAA Center from August 22nd and 29th. Man, it's loud in here for a neutral site game. Fake, fake shot, excuse me. Off the faceoff win. A pair of eights doing battle at the dot tonight with Colin Matthews. Taking that one to the cage early on, and Raposo now returning the favor, shooting it high over top of Dunham. He's got to be second or third in Beach's shots as a defender tonight. Man, he's got so many opportunities. Raposo? Yes. Yes. Rebound picked up and corralled there by Cam Accioni. We'll give. The beach is a second opportunity here on this first possession of the third period. Accioni into the corner, Zach Miller. Low pass for Collison. Three assists in the game for Collison now. As Miller's low shot bounds off the end boards. Miller did have a goal in that period. A pair now for Willem Firth and David Anderson as well. The only three Beaches players to put one in the back of the net. Chuck Rawson, Tiha McComber, and Braden Saris, the only three for Burlington. And number 21 in black has the hat trick in a 5 5 tie. Chuck Rawson across now for McLeod. He stops up and shoots. That one wide off the end boards. And Matt Accioni wasn't sure where that ball was. Otherwise, he may have had a breakaway. Great one on one defense by Dylan Robinson. He's been such a pleasant surprise for this Beaches team. Started the year off with the Ironheads as a forward, but has been playing defense for the Beaches. And you want to talk about some NLL prospects. I certainly think he's a guy, if he does declare this year, he'll be a guy that will be shooting up a lot of draft boards. To the outside for Brooks English here. Pass down to Greg Elijah Brown, turned his back to posture up against the defender. Now it comes for Chuck Rossin. No shot with 10 to go. On the shot clock. Does come here and Johnson makes the same. Pounces on the rebound as well. And as again, head taps all around as that defensive line comes off the floor for Toronto. Here's Raposo to the cage. Scores! It was just a matter of time before Jackson Raposo got himself on the score sheet here tonight. The veteran defender has been all over the floor. He's done pretty much everything except for scoring, and he finally gets it done here. Great job, shows that athleticism, takes that great angle to the net, and instead of blasting a shot, which we've seen him do probably three or four times tonight, shows off those silky mitts in tight, buries a beauty to give his team a 6-5 lead. And I love the body control there as well with the feet yes. dangling outside of the crease. That is a legal crease dive here in Junior A. We talked about that rule a couple times here tonight. There's a broken stick. I wonder if that's one of the face-off twigs down right at center floor. As Brooks English lost control of the ball. Quickly picked up by Dylan Robinson. Robinson on a run now. We'll slow down and get it back for Caden Hewitt. The Beaches lead 6-5. Cut and run again. David Anderson's got a hat trick. Matt, you've been watching the game of lacrosse for a long time. There's just those types of players 
that when it comes to the postseason, they just elevate their game. And that certainly has been the case for David Anderson. He's a big game, big moment player, scores another hat trick. And that fake was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> As Mitch Dunham bit hard. Another hat trick in the postseason for Anderson. And I set it up in Peter I'll say it again. The guy doesn't know how to score an ugly goal. And it, it's not just the game of lacrosse. What a nice save, though. Although only momentarily for David Peterkin is this shot well high over top of Johnson and the cage. How many times at NHL trade deadline day? It's not the you know top line 11 million dollar player that comes in. It's the league minimum gonna grind you out in the playoff type guy. David Anderson finding another gear here now that we've reached the month late July coming into early August. No time for a shot from Sarah as he put the ball down and Taylor Dooley right there to get the quick reset. Has to fix the helmet on the way. Is got a full face of plastic lacrosse head. Head coach Riley O'Connor also asking where the too many men call was. I thought he would maybe be yelling at the non-high stick, high stick yeah. there. Here's Rawson over the top. Just over four minutes gone here in the third period. Beaches now lead 7-5. George Pitt crashing through the center. Rawson will go to English who cuts the corner. And that shot just misses the mark. Another fantastic defensive shift. And it feels like this Beaches team, the way that they play when the offense scores a big goal, the defense yes. steps up and they get a couple of big stands. You love to see a team when they both units kind of feed off each other. I was just thinking the same thing as Anderson has come alive here in the third period. It's a four spot for Anderson, and maybe this is an ugly goal for his standards, even though it's a stunning shot. We'll see. Sets that seal for himself. Miller's going to get the ball, brings it down to that corner, and it, Miller... You talk about those guys who are a little bit undersized. Look how far he brings out <laughs> his man. Clears up all that space for Anderson to rip home his fourth of the game. Miller, yes, a, one of the smaller forwards on this team. But he plays so well away from the ball. Sets great seals. And that's just something that he'll get the assist. But the bigger impact on the play was him setting that hard pick. Yeah. And I don't think that it's any coincidence that those big defensive stops we saw in the appreciation on the bench as they were coming off has now led to a three goal run on the offensive side for the beaches. Whether that's just momentum swing, whether it's the guys on the front door saying they're gonna pick up the boys in the back. Either way, eight five now, the largest lead of the game for either side as the beaches threatening to run away here in the third. Great defensive stand once again. This time it's Taylor Dooley leading the charge. The guy who got high sticked in the face. Look out, here's Raposo again. Ball bounces straight into the stick of Alexis Samard though. Samard will drag it back, turns and fires. It looked like he was done with the play. Gets the shot in on Johnston. Great shot by Samard, not able to beat Johnson. And Samard, again, one of these Quebec-born players that we've seen on both these sides. I mentioned Miller earlier on. Phoenix Lefebvre. Nathan Pouliot's not in the lineup here tonight, but he's also a Quebec-born talent on this Beaches team. Well, I did see a... The Kodiaks hat, the Junior C program out there in the building tonight. So, well, you and I, when we called the Founders, the Founders Cup. yes. Here's Saris making sure that the Chiefs stay close yet again. Uh, what did we say? We called them pesky. They're a team that won't go away, and the Beaches have to know that. They get a, a little run of their own. 
but you know that the Chiefs were going to be clawing back. And who else but Saris? Another oh. great backdoor cut, and it's in and out of his stick so quickly. And what a player he is. We're talking the French connection. How about the English connection from the <laughs> yes. outside boards for the fifth time in the game? That play has worked to perfection. Beaches don't have an answer for it yet. Right now, it's got the Chiefs back within two for the moment. As Andy Dalton spins across center, takes the shot on Dunham. May have had the help of the form of Raposa with him on a two-on-one, but it'll be Burlington that brings it back. How are they still running this fast? It's a billion degrees in here. <laughs> Motor doesn't stop for both these teams. Seven minutes gone here in the third. Matt Accioni down the far side. It's okay, I've been sweating since Tuesday. <laughs> and we got to travel to Tony Rose tomorrow and then back to Iroquois Park. Couple spicy bars on, on Monday night. Spinning and no shot. Johnston was well out of position, but Samard somehow hits him from a bad angle. Samard double teamed and then drilled into the end boards. That's going to be an interference call all day as Samard pays for it there. Rawson getting a little involved right in front of official Josh Hiltz on the near side. Great job by Samard fight through a couple of hard checks there. He's had a ton of chances. He just hasn't been able to score. Here's Rawson. Look out, English is alone on that far side again. They try to cut through with Rawson. That's one way to deal with it is Raposo just sent him to the seat of his pants. Matt Accioni will just wait out the shot clock here as Good defensive stand for the Beaches. Matt Collison through the middle. Oh. <laughs> God, you wish they let that one stand. <laughs> that was gross. I'm still trying to recover from what Alex Gaston just did down to our left. Here's Saris. Hard shot coming in from Tabot English, but right into the Beaches logo on the chest of Will Johnson. And no Gaston on this set. He is the late man. As Willem Firth has it to the outside. Firth, the shot. Since those two goals early on, Willem Firth uncharacteristically quiet now in this game as Nicholas Volkov takes it from the corner. Boyle to the outside for English. Brooks English, the swim move, the high shot, ran through the crease before it was taken though, so ball will go back to the Beaches as we near the halfway mark. And great job by Raposo. He initially gets beat, but he starts running back and has that trail check and doesn't give up and just calls for help. He calls for help, but still finishes off the play. Dunham crouching over top of a ball there as we near the halfway mark. They've been giving goaltenders because of the heat here. Water breaks roughly every five minutes, so we're nearing another break here, Patty, and both teams still have all their timeouts. There's going to be a penalty here as all three officials saw the check on the hip there from McComber taking down Dylan Robinson. Great restraint by Robinson. I know he soaked that cross check right in the hip. He wanted to do something. Instead, he elected just to have a few words. That's a show of maturity Oof. from Robinson to have the... the you know, the foresight to see, okay, we're going to go on a power play. It's a long series. I can get my licks in any other time. Right now is not the time. 
I didn't see the call, but I'm guessing illegal cross check. Beach is a chance to get that three goal lead back now. Power play goals so far in the game from David Anderson, who's got four on the night, and Willem Firth, part of his two. That's six of the eight that the Beaches have put here in this game. There is Anderson. Firth will start down in the corner. Matt Collison getting it back for Anderson and clean interception nearly from Travassos, who will take it right in on Johnson. And Travassos hit Johnson heavy. Johnson, I think, was telling him to push back the other way, recognizing that Travassos was out of the play. You love to see that from your goalie. He doesn't look up at the ref, ask, what, where's the goaltender interference call instead? He's telling his player, book it down the floor. We got numbers. He's been doing that a lot. He's very animated in between the pipes. Is Johnson, the more that I watch his game, as now first tries the quick stick across to Gaston, who is absolutely snake bit here in the period so far. Oh, I thought he was going to take flight again. Boyle taking down Cam Accioni just outside of the fan. Boyle will continue to work over Accioni, keep one eye on them and one eye on the ball that works through Firth. And Collison again. Collison rips a shot off the dasher. This one's going to find the screening. And it'll be Burlington getting it with 44 seconds left in the penalty. Greg Elijah Brown. Brooks English trailing the play. Timon English wants them to slow things down. Chuck Rawson will be one on one on the near boards. To Timon English. Cut her through is Rawson who got double teamed just as the ball arrived. Willem Firth again, under 10 seconds to go in the power play. I think they're just going to wait it out until McComber gets back out. McComber rejoins the fray with, excuse me, Jacob Hickey on the doorstep. Michael Grace runs it over center. Collision on the outside boards. This ball brought back by Elijah Brown. Number of moves, still can't shake Raposo. Momentarily lost the ball, Saris will get it back. 10 on the shot clock, quick shot from Will McLeod and Johnson nicely to his left to handle that one. Matt Accioni will give to Cam. And now find Willem Firth. Pretty much always a good idea. And Jacob Hickey back here for Gaston. Gaston, the shot from outside, and again, Dunham's got his number here tonight. Burlington to set up again with seven minutes left in regulation. Chiefs down by two in this first game of the semifinal as Rawson shoots off Will Johnson. He got hit after the release, and Beaches will Bring it down and across center. It's Jack Perlin. Here for Collison. Matt Collison, three assists here in the game. To Cam Accioni and looking into the corner, it's intercepted. Here comes Grace. Lead pass intended for Brooks English. Hit him in the back. And now the Beaches will get it again. Josh Ferry. Pace has maybe slightly dialed down since we started, but otherwise these two teams battling through the heat tonight and still got it ramped way up. Accioni cross floor. Couldn't connect there with Firth as the ball bounces right in the stick of Nicholas Volkov. Volkov slams on the brakes and pass back for Will McLeod. That one bounced Aaron, allowing Andy Dalton to pick up. And now Dalton out of the corner. Meets a double team, ate a high stick as well, and lands in the crease of Dunham, and again, no call. Had a quick word with Josh Hiltz. 
as we're down to five and a half to play now in regulation. Burlington Faithful trying to get behind their boys in black. George Pitt over the top. Lost the ball on a check. Nearly picked out there by Timon English. He'll work around his screen and pick a corner. Where did that come from? That ball had eyes, Matt. From all the way deep out, I have no idea how this even finds the back of that. An, an unfortunate bounce for the Beaches, but a fortunate bounce goes the other way for the Chiefs. Great pick there at the top, but all the way from the restrainer. <laughs> As Ty English stings the corner, I think. Might have been a little bit of a screen on Johnson there, but nonetheless, a supremely accurate strike there to, once again, the Chiefs back within one. Will McLeod during this goalie water break just went down to all five of the Burlington draw team and gave them a little dap up as they're down by one again. These pesky Chiefs print the T-shirts. <laughs> As the pair of eights go head to head again, and it's Jeremy Phoenix LeFave getting it from Colin Matthews, who thought he had the clean breakaway. Look out, go Brooks English. We'll find Alexander Mourinho. Phoenix LeFave keeping Mourinho outside. Burlington wants a hold. None coming. As the officials have let them play through quite a lot here tonight. Yes, they have. Have been pretty consistent. Ten on the shot clock. Cutter through was English, and Rawson couldn't find him. Greg Elijah Brown, no look. Oh, man, <laughs> the shot there from Saris, far side, does hit Johnston right at the tail end of the shot clock. Jeremy Phoenix LeFave scampers off the floor as he was still out there with a the face-off twig. Timon English trying to find a cutter. Bounces back outside here for the Chiefs again. Rawson. Over the top of the shot, he had Johnson leaning to his right. The ball went left, and Saris unable to pick up cleanly, though the ball was right in front of him. And now the Beaches will get it. David Peterkin. Peterkin passes back to Hickey off the bench, and he'll wait for the rest of the offense to make this change with four minutes left here in the third period. Beaches have had a couple chances in this game to draw out the score and perhaps run away with it, but Burlington simply has not let them. Down on the corner, that one's in. Jacob Hickey, a bit of a nothing shot, gets through Dunham. Hickey, another one of these players that just has had a, a, a ton of chances, hasn't been able to capitalize and Burlington has to do a much better job not getting caught ball watching. Both these teams defensively, if there's one thing you can point out, that has been one way that both offenses has been able to find the middle of the floor, get in front and get to those high danger scoring opportunity areas. Jeremy Phoenix will fave another clean face off win. If you're enjoying this and you're watching at home, get the Central Arena tomorrow. Wear your shorts, it's another hot barn. Yes. And be sure to take your tablet or your phone because we'll be live from Tony Rose Arena with game number two of the Whitby Orangeville series. Both games getting underway at 7 p.m. George Pitt takes it to the cage and Travasos on the doorstep. There's a reason they call them hot summer nights, Patty. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Taylor Dooley stops across center. That crease call on Travassos has the fans buzzing here inside Brampton's Memorial Arena. Max Skeen, the interception, and then he gets taken down just inside of center. And Josh Hiltz will indeed give the holding call. Well, they're pesky and they're on the power play. Burlington not out of it with two and a half to go. Power play was dynamic. 
in series one. Started out hot in this game. They're gonna need to find a way to create some more offense on the man advantage here. Get this within one goal with two minutes and 38 seconds left. We know, Matt, there's a ton <laughs> of ball left here. A goal, though, would go a long way to tying this game up. Well, it'll be Saris that'll start with it. He's looking for goal number five tonight. Keep your eye on 21 up top. Keep your eye on Brooks English, the crease man on the far side as he's been the setup guy all night long. There he is, gives it back to Saris, and they connect one more time. Saris is an absolute bona fide sniper, and it shows right here. Goal number five, and this one might be the nicest one we've seen yet. We'll see, the initial cut comes here, and Raposo gets caught, has to go to his man, but then that frees up space for Saris. They end up getting that rotation, but it's just a little bit too late. Well, it's a variation of the English pass play that they've been running all night long that's been working where he's been finding the cutter. Yep. And this time English goes back up top and allows Saris to pick the corner to put Burlington back within one. And the cutter was basically used as a decoy to free up that space and allow your hot hand to take a shot from the top that has been sinking all night. I wonder if that's the play or if it's an option that Burlington might be using. We'll see as this series continues as Rawson's shot ends up in on Johnson. Inside the two minute warning. Both teams do have a timeout remaining here. Man, the, the number of games, the quality of them that we've seen the last week here in this league been outstanding. Miller trying everything he can to shake his defender, including a big fake pass. Look out, filled in on the crease. Somehow Miller just pops right back up. Miller and Samard going head to head there. We were talking about the Founders Cup a few years ago. Both of them played for that North Shore team with Phoenix Lefebvre as well. Here's Ross, and defender fell in front of him. Ross and Timon English to the crease. What a save from Johnson with a minute left. Clutch. Huge save from Will Johnson. Taylor Dooley across center. That ball just got away from Cam Accioni. He'll take it into the corner, passing back out in front. And that time Gaston was knocked down as the ball rolls into Dunham. Burlington will burn their time out here with 42.6 to go here in period number three. Another opportunity for these goalies to get a water break and a well-deserved one. Both of them have been so sharp about Will Johnson down the stretch, man. One, two, three, countless numbers of saves. And you know what? I don't even know if he maybe gets the recognition for how nice these saves are because how casual he makes them look. Well, that answers that go. question. <laughs> there you go. So if you couldn't hear, Mr. Thompson, the official, said 24 seconds on the shot clock, but a full eight fresh seconds to get it over half. Burlington fans making noise in the building and in our YouTube chat room, which is always open. If you're tuning in live, be sure you subscribe here because after tonight, our focus will shift to the other semifinal. Whitby and Orangeville, the winner of these two semis, will get an automatic advancement into the Minto Cup. Ball down into the corner here for Burlington. Saris in the middle. Here's the shot from Pitt and the save from Johnson. Now running into it, Timon English. Number of whistles here. That one bounced up and I think into the benches. Lead official Mark Thompson initially signaled it was going the way of the beaches and now all three will talk about it. And they all point down the floor towards Burlington's end. And Mitch Dunham is nowhere to be found. 
Beaches will use their timeout with 27.8 to go here in the third. And again, Matt, this is where that eight second rule is such a game changer. You can't just sit in your own end and try to kill as much clock as possible. You have to get it over in eight, in eight seconds. So that's why Coach O'Connor calls the timeout. He's gonna try to chalk something up here, get a play going so you can break that double because you gotta assume that's what's going to happen or they're gonna put pressure to try to prevent the beaches to get over in that eight seconds. And it looks like the Chiefs are going to keep the net empty here. So then there for sure will be a double. Then. Double. <laughs> what a game. There is a playlist, by the way, on this channel, as well as the JVI Sports Network. If you want to catch up on any of the action or relive any of the games that we've seen over the past week, that game number five between Toronto and Oakville is, was tremendous earlier this week. Here's Raposo trying to split the double, nearly lost the ball, does get up over center, tripped up. It does pop free for Michael Grace. The loose ball machine gets it for Rawson, far side. Brooks English can't bring it down. Travassos does, 10 on the clock. Rawson, backdoor cut from English, it rolls into the far side and the Chiefs player went through the crease. It'll be six seconds left for the Beaches who will draw first blood here in the semifinal series with a 9-8 victory. Absolute chaos <laughs> to end this game, Matt, but what? From start to finish, Patty, where were you? A thriller at the Mem. Both teams battled to the very end. The goaltenders were supremely sharp, but it's the Beaches coming out with a victory in game number one. We are in for an absolute treat. So the way to see the remainder of this series is get there in person. Unfortunately, as we said, they'll shift to Lee Side Arena without internet and Central Arena without internet. So. Our coverage will now focus on the Orangeville and Whitby series. Both game twos go tomorrow at 7 p.m. Game three, Orangeville, Whitby in Whitby on Monday. Game three, Burlington in Toronto. That's at Lee side at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. On behalf of my partner, Pat Gregoire, and the rest of the JVI Sports Network, including our director tonight, Rachel Wolf, and producer Gary Morrison, and the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. I'm Matthew Carrick. What a game. 9-8 Toronto Beaches win here tonight. Have a great night. Rehydrate, and we'll talk to you tomorrow at 7 p.m.